This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And we're ready to get geeky. Everybody's in the studio because it's warm in here. That's why. Uh, but with us, first of all, on the couch is... He's a gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. He'll, sit, he'll, st- he'll stand outside your boardroom while you're having a really important meeting. He is John Chichilla. How's it going? Also with the shirt that screws. Yes, with, uh, yes, autofocus. the compression. So oh, we if you're having, about this. if you're having trouble streaming us on uh, Facebook Live or wherever else you may be finding us tonight, um, I'm I'm sorry. I don't. It probably just looks like a big fuzz right now because there's no way this is compressing. Okay, so. I, I I like how it looks almost like I'm just static TV. It is. It is. It's like it's like remember like when they used to have like the shirt designs that were like you know a pattern and you. The person moves in the cartoon, but the pattern didn't. Mm-hmm. That's what you look like right now. <laughs> also with us is the Dutters. Katie Dudas is joining us here. She is a sales and marketing manager. Uh, uh-huh. Marketing and sales manager. No. Director of sales and marketing. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Third time. Well done. With the Scare House. Yes, it's a haunt of scaries. <laughs> <laughs> I say, were you making a cat? A, a cat? home f- with yes. with foam was yes. that was i was seeing Big on instagram chunks of foam yes i uh, turned a plastic container and a bunch of what we use at the haunt foam uh didn't take it from the haunt personal collection of foam <laughs> and made a cat house because it's freezing outside because that's what you do yeah that's what you do oh is that for the outside neighborhood cats yeah because there's some roaming around still mm. poor little buddies yeah um dutter's house of cat rescue uh over porch there kitty party porch <laughs> kitty party oh boy uh, this is the awesome cast you can check us out over at awesomecast.com at awesomecast on the twitter uh facebook awesomecast uh group and facebook page and that's where we stream and at least have the chat room here every tuesday night at 7 p.m eastern time and we're also streaming on the sorgatron media periscopes and youtubes and such uh, but uh if you want to be part of the chat if you're joining us live on any of those platforms please join us over on the facebook page for awesome cast uh you can also check out our streaming partners rivers edge pgh.com where they're carrying the latest episode of Saturdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and our friends on the West Coast, uh, the 405media.com, that carry us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern Time with the latest episode. Uh, you can also hit up producer Missy at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com if you want to come in and hang out for an episode and be in our studio audience, or if you're looking for advertising uh, opportunities and want to get the word out to our awesome audience here, uh, you can do that at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Um, uh, and also, thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Uh, our friends at the Coffee Club $5 level that have been supporting us for a good long time. Everybody here has been on here for a long time. Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore, as well as our friend at the fan of the show level, uh, Michael Fedor. Thank you, everybody. Patreon.com slash awesomecast. If you like what's going on here, if you want to be our boss on the show <laughs> and hear about how Chilla um, is having... <laughs> playstation woes of sorts to make sure he can play his spider-man without his kid bothering him uh you can go check out that gold on the patreon page uh for the five dollar members i feel like we should give them more control over what we do what like, them? Our- <laughs> there should be more we really should I mean, like we- what do you guys want like what do you want to do you want to pick what we eat for a day do you wanna, like, <laughs> there should be what something. we wear i mean we could pick a different we could shirt. do that there, there could be a a what do you want to say like a, a clothing theme Yes. <laughs> You're just worried because of that shirt. <laughs> no, I want to. I like it. I would wear my Iron Man onesie. Ah. I could, um, yeah. Do you want onesie day? Do you want onesie day? <gasps> I have a Hello everyone's going to participate. I have a Hello Kitty go. one. Yeah. We it gotta, doesn't have a hood or anything, it but it's got the footy pajamas. I don't pajamas. think I have any sort of onesie. Oh. Do I have to buy a onesie yes. for this? But 
Absolutely. I expect like a unicorn. I have a Snuggie. Does a Snuggie count? No. No? Hey, Patreons, you must demand that Sorg buys a um, nice onesie for the show or you're going to pull away your support. Yes. Threaten him. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Negotiate with me. Let's do it. Let's do it. But it would be fun to do like clothing theme days. Like light up shirt day. (laughs) I have some I have some Iron Man light up shirts. Oh, my cameras go out of focus from all the weird lights. (laughs) I like this. I like these ideas. All right. There you go. Hey, hey, Patreons, let us know what you want to see over here. Although, I think we're already all sold on onesie day. Um, I, I wonder what onesie should I get? I Like a Ninja Turtles one. I got the hoodie. And, and like pretty much matching PJs. Does that work? No? No. No? Well, you don't need PJs if you're wearing a onesie. Well, <gasps> you know what? We could, uh, because Walmart has a good selection. We should go to Walmart, give our Patreons the option to pick the onesie they want to see you in. There you go. That's how we. Yeah, that's that's there you go. That's that sounds like that sounds like a plan. Yes. Anyways, let's get into our awesome thing of the week. Uh, Did I? I think I got everything here. Uh, But (laughs) um, Chilla, what is your awesome? uh, Welcome to your weekly (laughs) Kivo check-in with John Chilla. So. TiVo. Somebody was bringing up about how like you're like you and that one guy on cord cutters. <laughs> the, the, so, and I don't understand why more people aren't into TiVo, especially as cord cutting has become more mainstream. You know, last time I watched something on the TV, well, it was Sunday because of Royal Rumble, and there were people with me. But, but from a from a device perspective, right? Mm-hmm. You can. It's a DVR mm-hmm. that you can DVR over the air. You can buy it outright. Mm-hmm. You can buy models. That That's bo- where it starts getting difficult for me. Buying it outright? Yeah, like when you say, "Well, there's you can no buy subscription." It. I think I, I think there's I think there's too many options. I think that's a problem. And also, people hear TiVo and they think it's from the '90s. But there's there's oh, I totally. I mean, then you're missing the boat on. Oh no! I, 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 I mean, I'm just saying. 4K I'm devices. not saying that's why I don't do it. I yeah. do it because I barely watch things on television. Uh, anymore, but it, it's literally like the majority is on this phone, on the phone, um, but or or the iPad or something, right? Um, but generally, my phone. They they sell devices where you can actually contact your cable company if you are still using cable and have them ship you a decoder card that you plug Ooh. into it, which then gets you out of the rental. All oh, right, and then now, now that you've given another TiVo sales pitch, TiVo, you should sponsor us. Um, <laughs> but so, please so, tweet them. So one of the things that TiVo does uh, to expand on the sales pitch on mainstream TV channels with mainstream TV shows, they index the commercials. Yeah. So they're actively doing this. They're actively doing it. So within is a person th- doing this or I, is it a cloud? That's what I don't is I don't know if it's a person. Is it is it is, AI. It, is it an AI? It's a it's a Skynet somewhere is yeah. logging all of our commercials. I don't know what magic works behind the scenes to make this happen. Yeah. All I know is when I watch shows like Arrow, um, Flash, This Is Us. Anything that's main, uh, modern family. That was a sharp turn on the episode <laughs> recall, by the way. <laughs> um, any kind of mainstream show that we watch, within three to five minutes of the, sh- the show going, completing, the show has a red or an, a green icon next to it that says skip. And what that signals to the, the user is that you can skip any of the commercials. So when it goes to a commercial break, it pops up and says, press D to skip and you hit the mm. D button and poof, you're at the next The D button. The, there's like A, B, C, D. Oh, okay. There's hot buttons on the controller. So you hit, is you the, hit D is the D button bigger than the other ones? No, it, it's not the big D. Okay. Just it's make the sure. same size D. Man. Um, easy jokes. <laughs> you hit the D button to skip and poof, you're magically at, the next iteration Ooh. and you can you can use it anytime in the show too so like if you're at the intro does it still make that pop-up sound no like it always used to no oh no? but interestingly enough they're doing an inverted mm-hmm. version for the super bowl mm-hmm. and they're calling it game skip <laughs> so if you, <laughs> if you and TV, hence our awesome thing today so if you are not into watching football you want to watch all the commercials for the Super Bowl? You can use the D button to skip 
the commercial or skip the game. Mm -hmm. So my plan is to DVR the big game Mm -hmm. and then use the big D button (laughs) to skip the game. I will probably watch halftime um, and then skip through the remainder just Mm -hmm. to watch the commercials. Hmm. There you go. So fun tech. That's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. What's the other way? actually trying to watch it well we kind of had our reverse like we, we call it the big game commercial watch party but i don't even feel like i want to do that anymore I'll, i'm watching super bowl commercials on youtube already because they pop up in my feed i'm trying to stay away from that whatever it, it's just <clears throat> no they will I never see as up. many this year as i did last they will year never live up but yeah get, get, give the next few days uh but um interesting so so you're going to do your reverse game. You're going to wait till like that night or. Yeah, I'll wait till five minutes after it's over. Five minutes after it's over. Okay. Go do something else constructive for the day. Mm-hmm. You know. Play Spider-Man. Uh, play Spider-Man <laughs> until. There you go. Perfect. There you go. Katie, what's your awesome thing here? Birds. 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 The bird photo, photo booth. <laughs> Wait, birth, I can almost talk. Bird bird. Bird bird. Bird bird. Oh, it's a bird photo booth. So it's essentially, um, it's, you can take. You, you set up this little bird camera, and you can take photos of your bird eating outside. Bird photo booth. Compatible with smartphones and tablets. High-tech spin on the classic bird feeder. It discreetly places a camera equipped device behind a bowl of bird seed. Um, and you can connect. There's some good pictures. That Aren't they? Don't you. they look posed? Some they're of these birds amazing. are like, look at me. I'm so pretty. Do they have a picture of the camera itself that's taking these pictures? I think it's further down, bird photo. I'm, I'm just oh, going through. Is. Well, that's a yeah. big bird. Yeah, isn't it? <clears throat> that bird is just like sleeping crazy. in the bin. It's a really nice wood structure. How yeah. much? How oh, much? wow. Photo credit, Amazon. <laughs> so so this thing is... Um, Pretty fancy pants. Jeez, how would you... It looks like a clock radio or some Not yeah. a radio, like an old-timey radio kind of look thing, right? Uh, has the camera in the middle. Looks like it's protected. Good. And there's a little. Um, um, there's a, a extended metal thing that the bowl goes on. Mm-hmm. And uh, then they have an additional uh, um, waiting room perch. It looks like above it. There's some serious. I mean, if you look on uh, Amazon, there's there's some quality bird feeder cameras on here. This one's there's a bright yellow one. How much do they run? Uh, like thirty dollars for this one here. Oh, That's really? Not yeah, bad. bright yellow one. Was this probably <clears throat> Wi-Fi and? Mm-hmm. Well, there's I some like expensive it. ones for like one fifty. So yeah, you can get your bird photo booth. So which feeder. uh say woman says a bird f- feeder photo booth is this um the, so this one is for sale. Yeah, but there's no link for that one. I can't find it anywhere. But unless I totally missed it in the Let's article. See. It, is... it says photo. Of from Amazon, unless it was an older model that she had, and it's not available anymore. Interesting. But so, man, this so one's three hundred and seventy dollars. So, if you want to investigate, um, or you can set up your own camera if you have a GoPro. Yeah, exactly. Just the uh, so you need to make sure it's not going to get like pecked <clears throat> at, right? Yeah. In the long run, um, but no, that's cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah. If you want to feed your birds, do it. And take their go. picture. That's the least they owe you. They <laughs> for eating all your food. There's a link to the actual bird photo booth. Oh. Where? Birdphotobooth.com. Uh producer Missy has just She's put in the, the chat. She's the best. Room. I will pull that up. She knows where she has her own index of the internet. <gasps> there it is. Oh, look how cute it is. It's it's very old timey. This is the one from the picture? Yeah. It's a little bit different. This one yeah, looks... It's yeah, it's a newer version. Less wood grain, more modern, old-timey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like a GoPro. Yeah, it looks like they put a GoPro in like kind of an old-timey um, set, set up there. 4K motion-activated Wi-Fi bird cam. Nice. Where did you put the link? In the chat. Uh, in the chat. Oh, uh, okay. It's just birdphotobooth.com. Photo, and it has it. And it looks like it actually looks like they have. It, it looks like one of those cheap GoPros that they put in there. Mm-hmm. To be honest, so it's a it is, it is a 4K motion activated Wi-Fi bird cam that they have for this. So oh, and, there's a whole a, a folder or a whole link. Oh my gosh, it's a hummingbird. 
Uh, there's a bunch of pictures on there, so you can look at other people's Oh, photos. and they have other, uh, uh, plenty of other accessories for this as this well. This is neat. So, awesome. That's all. Awesome. That's cool. That's a cool little thing. Um, so, my awesome thing of the week. Uh, first, I want to kind of give an awesome shout out to um, Toddy and the crew over at Thrifty. Um, I went to their podcast night at the, uh, at the Tolma, uh, which is basically at Toddy's apartment. Uh, but... <laughs> And they, they set up and, and did four podcast recordings, Neon Brainiacs. I, I came in right at the end of their, their recording. Uh, Ghoul on Ghoul, um, Thrifty, and, uh, and uh, Start the Beat with Sykes all did shows, uh, including Sykes did his uh, 200th episode where he talked about how Mortal Kombat basically, um, basically guided his life. Which was a really cool discussion uh, that you know. He, I guess he doesn't talk about his kind of upbringing and career too much. Um, so it was really, it was a really cool kind of. Um, um, uh, Toddy called it, said, "Hey, it's going to be really punk rock." You know, it was kind of like you know, uh, bands will do like a house show, you know, in somebody's basement or something. It was like that, but for podcasts. And it was a really cool thing, and they streamed it. If you go look up on uh, uh, Sykes uh, uh, Facebook account um he has that streamed over there go look up podcast night at the Toma. there's a lot of stuff linked there as well um but my actual awesome thing this week i've been it, it's a combination i've been using icloud icloud files apple clips and imovie to make social media videos you may have noticed there was a little clip from this show last week of the uh pornhub uh clips right uh, you know trying to surface some little bits um, something that I've been meaning to do for a while with these sh these kinds of shows, but I'm trying to do it for some of the other properties around here, and and I have been um, utilizing a folder on my desktop on my Mac that says just Instagram transfers. So I'll drop a clip in there that I want to throw over at Instagram, and from there, I wanted a good way to um, take clips and square them appropriately, put text on them pretty easily, and everything. So I'll take an episode of like say Awesome Cast, which is an hour, which is like what uh, after I downloaded back off of YouTube that has better compression than I do, it ends up being about 400 megs or, or something. Download it to my phone, um, killing my data plan, uh, <laughs> and uh, and and pulling it into iMovie, finding a clip, chop that clip out, and then for anything I want to square it, I will throw it in Apple Clips, and then take their little text um edits on there and then i'm able to kind of uh you know make a nice little square thing so the odd thing katie have you messed too much with the uh, apple clips i'm trying to see if this is the one that I, is this this is not no i was thinking it was the one with the um the not the subtitles but the yeah it does do the sub okay, subtitles because the live because i think that's really cool that's really cool the yeah. problem is i can't i haven't figured out how to make it subtitle a video that already has audio yeah. it's more when you're live. taking a selfie video it's yeah. the thing is really made to make a selfie video right mm -hmm. but if you take a video clip dump it in there and you can then cue text but every time you change the text, you have to hold down the record button. It goes through the clip like silently, but it will have the entire clip. Or you need to like stop it, change the title, not move the cursor so it's still at the same point of the video, hit record again. So you're basically kind of re recording in the video, but with the extra additional features. It was a really kind of funky process. But slightly intuitive while I was at it too. Um, I had fun doing it. Um, and 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 when I'm just looking for easy ways to do these little clips instead of sitting down, going into Final Cut, you know, doing the thing, you know, sitting on a computer, this is something that I can kind of do and gets activated for me to do in my spare time, right? Um, and here's a little bit of here's kind of the visual of what the one we did for Awesome Cast last find, week. And again, I kind of clipped it up so it was kind of the high points. Took some of the dead spots Fortnite, out of our conversation. I made a nice romantic, little like 30 or four, uh, 40 second tattoos, clip to it. Tinder, and just put like what it is mm -hmm. and what There's episode Fortnite it is there on is the Fortnite clip. And, and it's huge, you know, whatever font they use for Apple and everything. So, and we already military basically all the visuals from when we do our edit and we're showing things off as we're discussing things. So, it's just kind of sorry, I was looking at something online. <laughs> um and again did, did some other stuff for <laughs> on, on the um, I was uh, creating some indie mayhem show wrestling <laughs> mayhem show uh threw a clip up from last night um just kind of ch part of just reactivating a lot of the content that we already make here on the network so um so that's one way to do it because again just kind of using these things as you know the the producing equipment that i, I think they are and just you know 
trying to streamline things a little bit more. So that was, I put things in iCloud, I'm sorry, iCloud files. Then you download them, throw them into iMovie, use clips, and it works pretty well. And then there goes the fire truck. You guys can probably hear that. All right, so with that, I want to give a shout out to our good friends here over at Comic Book Pit at comicbookpit.com. Uh, they're coming up here with uh, some uh, recordings. I was just talking about talk, <laughs> so January didn't work out too well for them, but they got their uh, 300th episode up there. You guys can go check out at comicbookpit.com. Uh, it's, a, it's a new year, which means a new page for uh, our friends at Comic Book Pit. That page happens to have characters and speech bubbles. Tune into the Comic Book Pit podcast for your comic and comic book related news over there at comicbookpit.com dot com you can go and drop in their episodes um that they were talking about there um you know there are 10 years of martian manhunter green lantern uh talking about a fun stuff great stuff uh, there, there's an interview they did last year with uh, ed pisker uh who did the x-men uh grand design book and i believe the second one i think just recently or is about to come out um pittsburgh native here it was great to have him in the studio have a conversation with uh, uh, somebody actually making an x-men book uh so go check that out at comic book pit dot com all right let's take a look at what's going on in the groups you guys you guys have some negative news man <laughs> jeez uh one's going around brandon i keep hearing about this supposedly apple is going to do a subscription service i think we can just presume apple is looking at every possibility ever um but uh that's the latest out of that i i don't know i think a lot of people are looking at a subscription service for video games right i i think a lot of people are looking at this because they're saying this is the next big thing. And then Netflix said they're mm, looking at it. Who, but Netflix, uh, who, who, who did they say is not their competitor? Apple's not their competitor for streaming. They said Fortnite is their Fortnite competitor. is their competitor. Attention, it, it was more a statement that for that, that attention yes. is their competitor. So, so it, and we've seen a number of companies try to do subscription based gaming mm -hmm. and not do it well. Mm -hmm. and it kind of falls off. We, are we thinking of the on lives and the... Uh, yeah, like know, the game streaming. Kai and everything like yeah. that. But now, but now you do have that with PlayStation is doing that. You have a subscription service with Xbox with a Game Pass. The, I think what the issue is here, we have to unthink about... It needs to be cross-platform. Mm -hmm. So I shouldn't have to... If Microsoft should sell a service that's subscription based mm -hmm. that I can play on my phone, my whatever device, and I shouldn't have to think about, well, easy. oh, I need to go out and buy this specific piece of hardware. Okay, kind of like how Netflix is on my phone, on my tablet, on my TV. Kind of how net, or how kind of how Fortnite is on my Switch, my PlayStation, oh. my Xbox, my iPhone, my my everything okay okay I, I think that's really the next and apple even from a services this is where i think people misstate apple is, has this walled garden apple has a walled garden until it's a service apple music is everywhere mm -hmm. including it's going to be built into your tv but this is a level of difficulty, right? Because we're going music was easiest to deliver. Video was the next hardest to deliver. And we and that has been solved. Now something like video games is the next medium. But I would question why can't they make a client? Mm -hmm. I don't need to... To me, I don't need to stream, right? You don't need to stream the game. Even Netflix today, I can download most mm -hmm. of the content and game watch pass offline. Does, game Pass does a download situation. Yeah. So it should be offline where I think Apple's going to have a hard time is in the standard room, like mm -hmm. hooked up to a TV. And to me, that's where I think the Apple TV could make a, make a play for it. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be interesting if, oh, by the way, Apple had a PlayStation and Xbox client. Um, Katie, like me, you're not trying to solve the how many rooms can I play PlayStation 4 in, nope. uh, like Chilla <laughs> is. Uh, in, 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 but you are somebody that, you know, is, is mobile and does Netflix. Do, do you think, you know, like a, a subscription gaming would be attractive to you if it was a kind of a multi-platform situation like yes. that? Yes. Yes. Because I get bored easily. <laughs> <laughs> and it needs to work on your phone. Well, I get bored you. easily and then I get stuck on things that I just 
the same thing over and over again. It's mm-hmm. really weird. <laughs> like, oh, I'm comfortable with this. I like this versus better. the investment in a game where you're just like, oh, now I got to now I got to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. I might hate it. But... Yeah, it, 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 nothing worse than paying sixty dollars for a game that you're stuck on the first level. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> have, have we done that before? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, never really get through. But uh, it's interesting. I mean, it's here hearsay hearsay right now. Apple's work, supposedly working on it. Amazon's supposedly working at it. Uh, Amazon has internal developers that have been doing games for their Fire uh, devices and everything like that. And I, I wonder how that's really kind of really affected things with them. But um, I, I don't know. I think... I feel like these devices are at this point where there's like these subgenres of people that are into these, but it's nothing like everybody's playing Halo. It's like, no, a large number of people are playing this weird League of Legends clone that Amazon Studio made on fire devices that all these people have Kindles and fire devices because there's there are tons of them out there, right? But that's another one where I think Amazon could take it to the next level. What device do you have that you can't get a Kindle client for? Right. What, what device do you have that you can't get an... Uh, uh, what's their streaming TV? Prime. It'll be Prime, yeah. What device so do you now, have that you can't get the Prime Now client? Yeah. I mean, my TiVo has the Prime Now client. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's everywhere. I don't think they need to lock into, mm-hmm. hey, you have to go buy this Fire TV stick. Even at a $30 price point, I think $30 price point's nice for, hey, I'm going on vacation and I want to take this with me. To, again, to hook up to a TV, it's a lot cheaper than buying another game system. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, they need to build that client for the Xbox, don't the PlayStation. Don't we have kind of a top and the bottom rung here going on here? Like, hey, for everybody that wants all these features and have a 4K TV, here's your top Xbox and PlayStation, and we'll always sell you a new one of these, right? Mm-hmm. But then there's like a bottom level of, well, I just wanted to run on my stuff. Right. I, I, like, n- you know, relatively new ish hardware that we all have. So, well, um, I, I, Riz, Riz shared a really interesting thing. And maybe this is something that we'll be able to play on everything very soon. Um, or we can just walk in a field and, and start the simulation ourselves. Um, because competitive virtual farming is getting its own esport. That's right. Farming Simulator is going to get an esports league. I uh, is this a fast action game? Because I've never played it. I mean, have you farmed? Personally, <laughs> I mean, I grow tomatoes in my backyard in the summertime. Oh wow! Well, so you actually you actually have a pretty decent experience there. Oh wait, here's a little bit of a gif of what actually happens. I've, I've never There's, bailed hay and drug it around. I don't remember. Some I kind have of. bailed hay, and I don't remember it being this interesting. So, uh, or with this many fewer blisters. Um, but, uh, there's, yeah, there's, I don't know, there's like tractors and, 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 uh, fork, forklifts and, and stuff. Uh, <laughs> there was no forklift. There was no forklift on the farm I worked on. What is this? <laughs> what is this? What, what reality is this? But, um, no, I think that's okay. I think we're going to see this. I'm waiting for this to get more, uh, you know, on your TV or, or, or anything like that, right? That we're going to see this, but I guess it doesn't need to. It's on Twitch. It's, it's accessible everywhere already, isn't it? So farming similar. Would that be on home and garden TV? Do you think? Does that make sense? I don't think because home and garden, they don't actually do a lot of gardening. It's like, it's I'm more going home. out to, I'm buying. Yeah. It's more home than gardening. There's no flip this farm. <laughs> the closest you get is like the backyard flip. Lastly, in the contributed stories here, um, so so John Carmen was really interested in the Fire Festival uh, documentaries. Uh, mm-hmm. Chilla, did you get to watch them since? Uh, I have not I, either to watch of them. them uh, Katie, I think you got to watch you you watched the other one too, didn't you? No, I didn't. No, you did not get to. I yeah. I did watch both of them, um, and uh, uh, Carmen found um, a Fire TV. Um, but it, his comment: I'm watching those Fire documentaries we talked about. Uh, I can't click on the link. Because it's a fire with a Y, and it's um, it's it's not safe for work. We'll put it that way. I actually have a note to do not open on the show. So Carmen is is exploring and learning things, um, just not entirely about the festival we were talking about last week. So I'm just good for him. 
Good for him. Uh, so, an awkward segue to our sponsor, Slice on Broadway. Uh, no, they don't mind. <laughs> supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza in Beachview, Carnegie, East End, and PNC Park, home in the Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> Jeez. Um, <laughs> go check them out and uh, yeah, yeah, throw up on the Instagram for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, we went in and visited them today. So uh, go check them out. And then they are, uh, you guys are in the Pittsburgh area. Um, they are uh, a, a fine a fine pizza choice. Uh, best in Pittsburgh on multiple publications in multiple years and just all over the city. Um, so please go check them out. Slice on Broadway.com, PGH underscore slice on the Twitter, and also follow them on the Facebook and the Instagram. They are doing a lot of uh, deals over there. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And I think they also do have, they do also have a, a text uh, campaign that you get into online ordering Grubhub supported out there, uh, PNC park. I think, I think Uber eats as well. So you can get it about anywhere in the city now. So go check them out. Slice on Broadway. Dot com. Thank you to them for supporting the show with Good Eats for a good long time here. Okay, uh, where are we at on stuff? Um, so, Dutters, what do you want to talk about? Uh, so here. this, uh, I'm going to go with the Facebook paying the kids 20 bucks. What? Yeah, uh, so this is this, this article is an hour old, so it's very, very new. Uh, TechCrunch is, and it looks like BuzzFeed might have figured out some stuff too, but BuzzFeed News. Essentially, they were asking teenagers uh, since 2016, uh, users 13 to 35, up to $20 per month, they were paying them plus referral fees to sell their privacy by installing um, this app on either iOS or Android for mm. Facebook research. Essentially, it was taking all the data and they, they pitched it as um, they wanted to learn about your uh, internet habits, but it was essentially taking any, you gave them permission to go to any data in your phone. Um, so yeah. And they skipped right over all of, I, they've tried this before. It looks like in the past and Apple was like, figured it out. And they were like, no, you can't do this, but, uh, it's called project Atlas. And, um, but essentially, yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. Um, they, it's, it's insane. It's a VPN app. Uh, so yeah, let's just see what you're doing all on your phone, and we'll pay you twenty bucks, kids. Yeah, <laughs> at least there's a price tag on it, right? Yeah, at least you got some money out of it. <laughs> so, um, I don't think is it legal for them to do that for somebody in that age. Uh, well, they had asked for parental consent. Okay. Um, it never actually said that it was Facebook. It was kind of like, look at this internet research company, mm-hmm. and it's Facebook, obviously, <laughs> because <laughs> you know. Uh, for twenty dollars per month via e gift card, you'll install an app on your phone and let it run in the background. Mm. And it's interesting because they show um, the the ads in this particular article are um, Instagram ads. Mm-hmm. We're looking for participants for a paid social media research study. Never says anything about Facebook. Click below to learn more. Um, and then you swipe up to learn more, and then you install it and give it all sorts of permissions. And um, yeah, it's, did, it's go ahead. Did you ever? I can't remember what the name of the service was, but there was this service back in like the late nineties that you installed a toolbar in your browser mm-hmm. and they monitored what sites you were going to. Was this to. the purple monkey one? Are we back to no, that? No, it's not purple monkey. This was <laughs> no, like wasn't the purple quasi monkey. legitimate. <laughs> um, is this the same one that would send you a computer with that would display ads? I never saw the one where it's they sent you a computer. Like, I, there was one was, where they it, they would send you if you qualified for it. It was like a trial thing they were doing. They would send you a computer. This is like mid to late nineties, so it was like a penny a maybe. And you know, if you're like, I need a new computer so I can get on, you know, do things, and it would just show like ads. Like there would be a border around everything you did. So this put a border. You could pick if it was the top of your screen or the bottom of your screen Mm -hmm. and it would display ads and they would also record like what links you clicked on Mm -hmm. and they paid you like by the hour. Mm -hmm. So of course I remember something like this. I can't remember what it was called, but I definitely somebody out there has my remember what this was because it was also a pyramid scheme. Mm-hmm. So let's pretend you got like a buck an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got someone else to sign up, you got an additional I like nickel this. for every hour they were on. So we started generating email addresses and setting up computers with like we would put the browser in full screen mode. And then we had like this app that would 
randomly move the mouse and click around the screen. Mm-hmm. So it would keep the computer alive. It would make make it think you were browsing the web and we would just let it run mm-hmm. like eight hours a day on like six computers. <laughs> Because they would get on to you. If it was like 24 hours a day, they would kind of get on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So we would fire it up for so many hours, shut it down, fire it up. And yeah, and like we would get checks. Like I would get a check in the mail every month for like 100 bucks. Jeez. Because yeah. I pyramid scheme to myself <laughs> with multiple email addresses and multiple PCs. And just like movie pass, this is how it goes out of business. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Hey, Katie, let's get a positive note out here. <laughs> What's your other social media tip on here? I get a hot tip. Hot tip. This is something uh, producer Missy and myself figured out. Okay. Um, for example, a lot of times you'll post a link on Facebook and you'll put your link up and it'll automatically generate. If you don't include a picture with your link, it'll automatically pull from the, the link on that page an image mm-hmm. for Facebook. And sometimes that image has is, is outdated. Sometimes it's just not right. You're like, what's going on here? So you can go into Facebook and the developers, this, there's a whole section, Facebook for developers. And, um, it's, it's a lot of, it, there's a ton of stuff you can do on here, but one of the easier things and the cool things you can do is essentially Facebook is crawling, they call it, um, the, the different pages and taking information. And that's how it decides what image it pulls up. So if you go onto your page, like you search on your particular website, like I can search on here for scarehouse.com. Um, I can get some information that fit. This is what Facebook is pulling essentially from scarehouse.com. Mm-hmm. And then it'll have a particular picture, a uh, link, all kinds, you know, some, there's a lot of information on this end, but one of the important things that you can do and easy things you can do is if you update the image on your website, you can cl- click on the thing. It says time scraped. It'll tell you the last time it scraped all this information from your particular link and tell it to scrape again, and it'll pull updated information from your page. So if you go in and update um, your information, um, you should probably just go in here and just be like, hey, I'm just going to scrape, just make sure it's it's been recent. And the only thing is, is it will, like if you have an image that overrides all of your images um, on your page, it will pull still pull that image up. But if you don't have that, um, oh, I'm totally blanking out on what it's called. My brain not working. Let me pull that up real quick. Um, but yeah. So, so this is a problem I would have on um, on like my WordPress. Like yes. where, I, we, we hey, we put this new DVD out and we want to promote that it's there or there's a digital download or whatever. And it'll pull up like the IndieWrestling.us logo from it that's like small and it'll blow it up and it'll look really ugly versus like the album cover or the the, the video cover that we, we that want to display, right? Yes. Like this is the kind of thing that you want to do, especially if you're putting product stuff out or articles or or something like that. Your blog is, is, isn't, isn't yeah. displaying the right image. Um, you know, so, so you might have to ask the scrape again. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, so if on your um your page, it's like it's called OG colon image, and that's the thing at the very bottom. If you use like WordPress or something at the mm-hmm. bottom of your SEO section, uh, where essentially you give it an image that you wanted to use every time somebody's using a link from your website. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have that image set, it'll pull in the last images from your particular page. Facebook will pull the last images from your page. So if you update your images or any information on your page, you might want to have Facebook scrape your data. Okay. Because it might have some old pictures. There you go. Hey, and this is especially states that have been around for a while, right? That that maybe has some old legacy stuff in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So something like Scarehouse has been around for like 10 years? Uh, it's not too bad. It seems to do it... Um, it, I think Scarehouse is the last time I did it was around Christmas time, mm. like January. So it seems to do it on its own. So there's a lot of Christmas often. pictures that might have popped up. <laughs> yes. So. If, yeah. It might because there was still a creepy Christmas image. I was like, there mm-hmm. you go. Fixed it. Done. Awesome. Chilla, what do you want to talk about here? Um, do you want to do. So have you read about the FaceTime bug? I have seen the Facebook book. Okay, how much do we need to worry about the Facebook? I'm sure I'm going to hear so much more about the face, face FaceTime bug. Time bug. And the idea is there was a method that, and I didn't read what the method was, that you could go, like, see what's going on on FaceTime even when somebody didn't answer a call. Yes, right. and that's, there's, there's no special magical way to make it work. Literally, all you do is FaceTime someone. Yeah. And the bug is you immediately get their live video and audio feed. 
before this was they pick a, up. Now this was this was, wasn't this one of the features of the newer FaceTime that you would get a no that was a Google thing wasn't that it was that, a, that you would yeah. see the other side when they call through but like you would see you, you would see who's calling you yes. wouldn't see but that wasn't FaceTime they weren't seeing you yet no, no that no. was allo or duo so you I, I imagine you're probably the most right of us on the situation yeah, so so the issue is is that facetime if you fa- and i know it was weird because i noticed this yesterday because i went to facetime someone and before they picked up i could hear them like juggling the phone out of their pocket and this i was getting a dark feed whoa but I was getting a dark feed because the phone was in their pocket. Oh. So you saw this in the wild a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, so I, I and I thought nothing of it yesterday until I read about this bug last night. Wait, wait. And in the article you shared, a 14 year old tried to warn Apple about it. And yeah, we hear about this constantly, right? Like number of people tried to warn Microsoft about the file deletion yeah. bug in, in the October update. Um, this article was about a 14 year old and their mother that that have been trying for weeks to warn Apple about this bug because they were using the the fourteen year old was using FaceTime to coordinate Fortnite games. Yeah. As one as you do. (laughs) As Um, you do when you're not watching Netflix. Yes. Um so it's interesting. Like I look at this and I think, well, it's a big deal, but Apple will fix it. And then I Mm. question like, is it that big of a deal? But then I guess it kind of is because if you have your phone just sitting on the table and you're carrying on some kind of conversation, or you're well, like, "Oh crap, it's that jerk chilla." <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like somebody calls me, I just got out of the shower, I pick it up, see as a FaceTime, I'm like, "Oh hell no, cut it out." <laughs> you know, I mean that's a, that's a that's direct the, issue. Oh, yeah. I'm on the toilet. Uh, no, I'm not answering a FaceTime right now. Um, but meanwhile, I'm completely FaceTiming with them. Yeah, and I, I've I've heard you know Apple has blocked group FaceTimes for this yes. reason. Yes, they, they, they've they've uh, part of the, the I guess the thing that enabled the bug was the, the the blocking of group FaceTime. That was a feature in the last OS update or the last major update that came. I think a couple of days in or something, right? Yeah, so they've blocked that. But this was well, I saw it yesterday on a one to one FaceTime. So. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a, a it, it could be a feature in that that still enables yeah. as part of it. It, it. It's interesting. I'm sure we're going to see an OS update in the next day or so to yeah. to remediate. They were uh, uh, Steve problem. Steve saying that they were talking about it on DVE this morning. That that's how big it is. I mean, this is well, a big I, deal. And, and I, I wonder oh, if. I, oh, 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 sorry, go ahead. So every time that we hear about one of these random bugs that like crash this person's iPhone by sending him a text message with this random character. Yes. Like, I wonder, are we going to see like a, a, a increase in FaceTime calls? Just people trying <laughs> to, to, to Even make though, use of this. Although interesting that it's a server side fix. Well, it's a server side immediate fix. Um, but I imagine there, there'll be something they put out yeah. that, that, that fixes both sides of it. Um, also, did you know it's data privacy day? I did not know. <laughs> as long as you're not using FaceTime. Yes. Uh, so a little bit of embarrassment. Also, also Apple that was trolling CES with that billboard about being in the privacy con- company. Well, it, yeah. it's the most private device as long as you don't turn it on. Yeah. Or put Facebook on it. Or, I mean, it, I understand where they're going. They don't harvest your information and reuse your data and use it for additional sales and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I felt like that billboard was like a false, gave people a false sense of security because they're, they're not doing any, like they don't prevent you face or they don't prevent Facebook from tracking things in the Facebook app or Instagram Mm -hmm. or, or whatnot. So, I don't know. I think you still there still needs to be intelligence on the user's side to understand that that we keep your information private. They keep your information private from their perspective, but not necessarily from everyone else's perspective. I mean, come on now. The default search engine in the Safari browser is Google. <laughs> 
Right. So you're telling me Google doesn't have access to everything that you just go into the URL bar and search for? Right. right. Um, so I, I think there is some transparency that they could provide around their whole privacy statement. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, unless less an awesome thing, I guess. But uh, so, I, I, OK, I got I got to bring it up. I got to bring a bump around. I want to talk about video games and robots. OK, <laughs> first of all, um, not much to show except for a couple pictures. There was a modder that's trying to recreate the Legend of Zelda in the Doom engine. This is exciting. I, well, you know, the walls and the everything are pretty flat. It kind of makes sense. You're, you're using the pixelated guys. So there's a couple screenshots. Unfortunately, the modder um, has run out of time. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's just getting a little too busy. Can't get it done. He put the files up hoping that somebody will finish it. So somebody, this is awesome cast, pleading to you right now. Please, aspiring Doom modders out there, um, please go finish The Legend of Zelda. <laughs> please please make The Legend of Zelda in Doom. Uh, you guys see the images of this thing when they popped up there? It looks pretty cool. Like It, it, seemed, it makes a lot of sense to be like that kind of flat thing mm-hmm. on like a NES deal, right? So Yeah, it looks very Zelda. <laughs> it does look very Zelda. So it's a very literal translation of, of, of Zelda. Also, um, Amazon has... Here goes Amazon again. Who mm-hmm. knows if we'll actually see this thing, but it has its own autonomous six-wheel delivery robot. That uh, video. A charming video. So the robots don't scare us. Um, you know, just rolling through the unassuming suburbs of, of you know, wherever. And uh, so... <laughs> It's uh, it, it rolls up to your in front of your your, your house. Yeah, I imagine you, it, it, it gives you a uh, notification just like when the drivers are like two stops away, and it opens up its its time. A little smile in there. I don't know. I, I, how? Maybe this is the suburban like answer to things, but you so know, I, I, I can't imagine it on the you know, cruddy city sidewalks here in Beachview in the hills. How does it get loaded up? Where does it launch? From? Like, does it launch from one of their distribution centers? Um, not seeing anything in here. Uh, it's powered by electronic electric. Yeah. Electronic electric batteries moves at a walking pace. <laughs> so you're not going to get So it. if you want to deliver something from your house to my house. Hey. Ooh. Oh, think about a walking pace, though. It's not getting there quick. No, like, wait, 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 what are you, like, two miles away from me? Yeah. Yeah, it's not getting very... You have, like, you'll see it in, like, two hours. Yeah. Um, as long as... And if it doesn't get hit by a car... Or down. the train or, or <laughs> yeah. something, right? Or, or, <laughs> or salted, you know? I want it to have, like, a taser on it. Like, if you touch it, it just zaps you. Like, like or, when R2-D2 shocks yes. the Ewok in Return yes. of the Jedi. Please step away from the device. Have a nice day. Um, they were they were um they're trialing it in a single neighborhood in this can't be a real name Snow Hamish, Snow Hamish County, Washington, and uh they, they said they're del- delivering packages in daylight hours between Monday and Friday, so no nighttime deliveries for the for you know ruffians to rough up the robot because we've seen what happened to that in Philadelphia. Uh, also, I bet Philadelphia doesn't get this robot. <laughs> If you're not home to accept the, the delivery, it um, poops it out the bottom. It, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That was a joke. There, there's nothing there. There's nothing about it. I think. I think. I imagine they say like, "Hey, make sure you're home. The delivery is coming." You know, um, <laughs> it, it takes its four hour leisurely stroll back to the I, depot. I have an interesting comment. He's assuming they're using trucks as carriers, so essentially. Okay. Part. Pa- pa- Potter, Potter's saying in the chat room that they they he thinks they're using trucks. So I I, I kind of like have that visual myself of, of just like a truck pulling up and like you know this little door opening and like like eight of these robots scurry scurry at a walking pace <laughs> at a leisure, out of yeah, at, at, at a, a slow leisure, walking pace. at a slow walking pace. It's it's innovation at a slow walking pace. Um, but oh, no <laughs> there's the show title. Yep. <laughs> Innovation at a slow walking pace. I wanted to like launch the package onto your roof, like a little spring inside. Just like, Pew, we left your package. It's like, like a t-shirt cannon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yep, no, exactly. Don't, no, not if it's on your roof, right? Hopefully, this thing could take a better picture than most of the delivery people, because like most of the delivery pictures I see are like random blurs. Like it's like the person 
dropped the package off and then like took the picture as they were walking away and it's just like a streak mine's always a very suspicious wide shot of my porch and was just <laughs> like mm, i don't want to be reminded about how much stuff i have on my porch thank you uh but yeah uh, <laughs> it is it's a follow-up from Podner also in the chat room from the uh uh, and I saw him posting this on the other part too about the uh, the Apple thing. Um, a reminder: the bug no longer works. You don't have to do anything else on your end. You're safe. A patch is coming in a few days. Be hella mad, but don't panic people further. So just tell tell mom and grandma that they're okay if they're seeing this on TV or the evening news because it's probably all over the evening news. It's on that point there. Um, other good news, and once again, because I just canceled Hulu, it is now. <laughs> They, and and also to notice, you know, we had our Netflix prices raise, and now Hulu has cut the price of its basic service to six dollars a month. This is the advertising version of Hulu. I think I was paying about twelve dollars a month for no ads. Um, also on the slide, they did raise the price of the um, TV streaming service, so kind of stretching it on both ends. Um, I don't know if that means you're going to see more ads, maybe. But um, I mean, it'll be interesting to see because they obviously have to be have a sustainable income to keep the service alive. How many people are still doing that at the advertising model, right? To, yeah. To make that worthwhile for them, I guess. So I, yeah, I don't know. So it's it'll be interesting to see what other changes we see get made, or will this be a temporary drop that we see increase? It makes it easier when, like, the new season of Runaways and Future Man or a Fire documentary comes out mm -hmm. to be like, yeah, I'll, six bucks, and I'll deal with the ads, right? So, I don't know. Um, where are we at with Showtime here? Um, finally, uh, I wanted to... No, that's a visual thing. We, we won't do that for you guys on the podcast here. Um, Chilla, what is this the part about stealth smoking the head out here? So we were talking about vaping before the show started today, <laughs> and I saw this device. Um, it's a handheld filter for vaping and cigarette smokers. I thought it was interesting. The concept is you breathe in whatever you're, you inhale your cigarette or your vape, mm -hmm. and then you exhale into this device. So what is it? It's a little, it's a, Wait, is that the vape or is that the thing they exhale into? The th are you talking? So I'm looking at the little blue F Philippe, Philippe thing that's so sitting on by a laptop. On the on the bottom to the right facing the laptop is like what you would in inhale out of like oh. as a vape. Okay. And then you would blow it into the, you would flip it around and blow into the opposite oh, end. So it's all on the same device. Yeah. They made, they make, they're going to make two devices. One that's all integrated and then one that's just an exhale. Because, because how would that work with cigarettes? To say if, otherwise, right, right? That type of thing. So, um, so ideally if this works out, no smoke goes anywhere to, to stink up the joint. No smoke or odor. Or odor. So when you think about a, typical vape person some people don't necessarily complain about the odor because mm -hmm. it's like raspberry cheesecake smelling but Perfect. they complain about the massive cloud that's left behind yeah so this eliminates both the the visible cloud whether it be vape or cigarette and it eliminates the smell as well hmm. i thought it was an interesting idea um i'd like to see how well it works and it only works for about 200 exhales that seems seems low to me yeah i don't know you're you're the one that knows this i don't know because i don't keep track of my inhale you can't actually i there's like a it's almost like a fitbit for the vape oh yeah <laughs> is, um, that, is that like the opposite of a fitbit though sort of yeah yeah but so i i don't use that but it seems like to me Maybe it last. I don't know. Would it last you? I don't know how long it would last you. But there's a subscription service <laughs> where they ship you of three of these every there three months. Is. Of course, there for is. thirty bucks. Um, I don't know. It's 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 an interesting idea. I feel like we're chasing the how can I get a like how can I get away with smoking in public? So we went from let's ban <laughs> cigarettes everywhere. Yeah. To Oh, a vape isn't a cigarette. Let's move to vape. Yeah. To no, 
this this establishment does not allow please vaping. no vaping please, please don't no vaping. vape here it's it, yeah it becomes about the smoke in general right which, to you know, now hey we make this device that will cover up the fact mm-hmm. like it just seems like we're con we're, we're chasing legal issues there's a demand there is a demand for this, right? And, and maybe not even just like getting through establishments. Maybe just like, you know, I work a stressful job. I don't want to come back, obviously, smelling of smoke, you know, when I come back to my desk around people. Because that's just as annoying to people as the actual smoking. Mm-hmm. Especially now that they don't have it. Like, I notice now that they don't have this in establishments, I notice smoking more, right? You you become more sensitive to it when you're not catching it all the time just by glance, by being on the other end of the restaurant, right? Um, so I think that's just for the conscious smoker, I guess, for something like that. So, cause man, I've had people smoke who knows what before they get in my car when I'm doing lift and I'm worried that it's going to stick around for the next person. And they're going to think I'm the one smoking up while I'm driving. That's so bad. But, um, but yeah, there you go. That's for weed smoke too. Doesn't it? I guess it would. Why wouldn't it be? There's your real market. All right, guys. <laughs> Speaking of, and you know, we can design the ad campaign for that. Our good friend at AlexCars.media. Go check him out over there. He is uh, putting together a puzzle of design uh, and media from branding to print and digital products. Alex can do logos, merchandise, t-shirt, video, video projects, and more. Check him out at Alexander Cars, AlexCars.media. That's uh, K A H rs.media to get more information do a project with alex if you need some uh, visual work done for you go check them out alexcars.media a lot of great stuff that he's done over there so thanks to him for supporting the show here all right as we head out here um please go check out next week we have bobby cherry joining us well, I, I do realize the event says 10 p.m no that is not a per that no wait no it's been Maybe it's something else that was showing me that. Um, and also, please go check out our friends, like I mentioned earlier, like Thrifty Podcast. Supporting the Thrifty Podcast shirt. Uh, get roached, guys. Uh, and uh, check out the live streams and the pictures from uh, their, their podcast night event. And uh, also check out We'll Be Live here on Thursday morning with the Pittsburgh Current uh, with some special guests um, from uh, the music- Pittsburgh Musical Theater. I know, and uh, I think anything else to plug? Katie, you got anything going on over there? No, I don't feel like it. Don't feel, you don't <laughs> feel like it? Nope, I don't feel like anything. I don't feel like anything is happening right now? No, I feel very boring. It's nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, at Katie Dutter's on the Twitter? Yep. And I uh, just sent uh, Doug Durda a meme that says, I guess in hindsight, getting drunk and running through Arby's nude yelling, I have the meat was a bad idea. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. I think it, it reminded me of Doug. Um, suggestion that's been going around just because I thought of it now. Um, Amanda, uh, and I see, uh, watched American meme. Yes. I've seen that. I think that's a Netflix show, right? It's great. I have not. I'll check that out. That's uh that's going on the watch list for me. So yeah, it's really interesting. It's all about influencers. It's really, it's, it's wild. It's wild to see it. It's fun to see these. Like this reminds me of when like the Helvetica documentary came out and, and, and all the font, you know, the font geeks were like, yes, I'm going to be badass. But um, no, it's, funny. it's it's interesting to see these. It really is kind of culture right now. So, Chilla, John Chilla, Chilla on the Twitter, on the Twitter, John Chilla on the Facebook, Chilla. I can't remember what on Instagram. <laughs> hey, I can't Chilla remember five seven nine. Chilla five seven nine. I think it's five seven nine. Yeah, Chilla five seven nine on the Instagram. Yes. Oh, hey, Super Bowl Sunday. This is the. If you like your sports ball, guys, go check out the Bold Sports uh, uh, Super Bowl Brunch is going to be here. Uh, they're they're going to have beer. They're going to have their show. We did this last year. We had a lot of fun with it. Um, and uh, we have we we have um, um, Fury Brewing. Eerie Brewing. Fury Brewing, Fury Brewing, Fury. Who's, who's representative I know from professional wrestling as a wrestler named Happy Hour. So I'm really looking forward to see um, 
uh, this event and, and preside over that and and see what's going on in the sports ball world, guys. Uh, so <laughs> thanks, Steve, for reminding me about that. I knew there was something else, uh, but uh, go check that out. Check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great podcasts. Oh, um, a new podcast. Check out Level 4. It is the SAE International um, Auto Drive Challenge podcast. This is the automated car competition that's go- that happens in Michigan uh, this year. I think it was in uh, Arizona or something last year that um, they are they're, they're students, college students that are making uh, working with lidar and AI technology um, to to achieve level four status in a, in a, uh, automated driving cars. There's, there's going to be a fun course. That's going to be involved. It's the podcast uh, starts off and talks about the partnership between SA International and General Motors. Um, so I get to uh, host that uh, conversation uh, as part of uh, uh, this year's SAE podcast. Um, great stuff going on uh, with all of them. There's um, Shop Talk, the Baja podcast. It's going to have new episodes coming up soon. Fastcast, the Formula SAE podcast. Uh, we just recorded a uh, one about their new uh, course situation. And they have several podcasts that have already been out this year. Uh, so if you want a little, and, and um, um, Flight Plans is the uh, aero uh, design competition. I remember all of them. We do four podcasts for SAE International now. It's crazy. So go check all those out on your favorite podcast thing. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of good conversation there if, you wanna, if you're interested in any of those topics. Um, and there's a lot of stuff, uh, you know, a lot of information about the competitions, but also a lot of the kind of like technology goes into them and those discussions as well. So you can check them out. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, our chat room. A lot of you guys in the chat room tonight, like Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast, Durda of Should I Drink That and Yin's Love Barbecue. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Potter says, SAE, you say, hmm, I should probably listen. He might be involved with that company a little bit. Steve from Bold Sports Pittsburgh, a lot of podcasters involved in our chat room today really appreciate that thank you everybody for tuning in thank you our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com